Konnichiwa, mina san, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Raina Scully, coming to you from quarantine in Japan. We made it back safe and sound, though it was a damn long mess. It was significantly more difficult to return to Japan than to enter the U.S., something we were made well aware of before ever leaving. Loads of paperwork and very, very meticulous, specific quarantine measures that I'm going to break down for you in this video. As mentioned in my previous vlog about what it's like to leave Japan during the pandemic, the regulations keep changing. In fact, we had to accommodate several different changes that were made the week we were scheduled to leave, so be mindful that the circumstances are ever-changing and you have to keep a close eye on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website and the Ministry of Health and Labor website. What I'm about to show you is what it was like for me at this specific time. And no, Japan did not care whatsoever that we were fully vaccinated. No one ever even asked us. So here is a checklist overview of what is required of you to enter Japan. First, you need a negative COVID test result within 72 hours of your international departure flight and your certificate needs to be signed by a doctor. Two, you must sign the written pledge that promises that you will abide by Japan's anti-COVID measures. Three, you need a Japanese phone number and a smartphone that can handle the three apps that are going to track you during your mandatory quarantine in Japan. Four, you need to secure that you have some kind of private transportation that'll bring you from the airport to your quarantine destination, whether it be your home or a hotel. And finally, you need a Japanese address that you can quarantine in for the full 14 days. This is basically the minimum that you absolutely need before you can even think about heading to Japan. So now let me show you exactly what my personal experience was and how it all went down. All right, the first step, getting the the right type of COVID test that Japan accepts and having a doctor fill out that health certificate for you that you have to then surrender when you enter Japan. No digital acknowledgement will be accepted. You physically have to print this sheet of paper out. This is what the certificate of testing for COVID-19 looks like. You have to submit this piece of document upon re-entry into Japan. This document needs to be filled out by a doctor after you have received your negative results from the lab and the doctor has to sign it and have an imprint of the institution's seal. Be mindful of asking the testing facility or doctor's office which tests they have and mention these acronyms. These are very specific clinical tests. A lot of rapid antigen tests aren't accepted by Japan, so just be very precise when asking if these tests are offered. Next, let's take a look at the written pledge which outlines every criteria for your re-entry into Japan and what you have to do afterwards. Here is the written pledge you have to fill out and submit upon returning to Japan. It also gives you all the information you need about what to do when you return, like details on your 14-day quarantine, what you can and cannot do, and it's basically a contract you have to sign saying that you will abide by all these rules and that if you were to break any of these rules, that there will be dire repercussions. This is the page where you fill out your personal information and essentially acknowledging the written pledge on the previous page. You must submit a Japanese address and a Japanese cell phone number that works. You also need a smartphone. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Japanese cell phone, but you do need a smartphone that is associated with the email that you will submit to them. You also have to make sure that your transportation is accounted for and that you are absolutely not using any public transportation. Uh, my dad is going to pick us up from the airport. I would say that this is the most difficult condition that we had to meet. Quarantining for 14 days in our house is not really a big deal, but having somebody private pick us up from the airport Oh, this was very, very difficult at times. We downloaded the written pledge from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website, but they actually do hand it out to you during your flight, so you can just fill it out then. 
Now, before you check into your flight, you have to fill out this online questionnaire that asks for very specific details about your flight, like your seat number and your flight number, final destination, layovers, your full name, health conditions, etc. Doing this provides you with a QR code, which is necessary for check-in. I again flew United, so maybe the criteria is different for other airlines, but we had to refer to this QR code over and over again, even after we entered Japan, so I do suggest taking a screen shot of it. Everything from the initial departure from Newark went pretty smoothly. We didn't run into any issues per se, but it was very, very clear that so few people are dealing with individuals traveling to Japan, and they're very aware that Japan's strictness is absolutely bonkers. Uh, we wasted a lot of time having to verify information between like four different people behind the counter, so I do think you need to leave yourself an extra extra hour or two at the airport. But even with that, we were able to fly out to Chicago where our layover was and everything in O'Hare was even smoother. Unlike in Newark, everyone we spoke to at the counter was very knowledgeable about Japan and their conditions and it assuaged a lot of our anxieties. However, as you saw, there are so many people in O'Hare and it's such a drastically different airport scene and environment than just a month prior. I was also quite surprised to see how many non-Japanese people were heading to Japan. Currently, only Japanese nationals like myself, permanent residents like my husband, military personnel, some diplomats, and some international business tracks are allowed entry into Japan. For the most part, Japan still has over 150 different countries banned from casual visitor travel and entry. From what I can tell, it looked to me like 50% of our flight were people like myself and my husband, 25% were military and diplomat related, and then the other 25 were business tracks. I have no idea when Japan will allow visitors to enter Japan again, but I do suspect that even if the borders open up, you will still be required to adhere to this very strict quarantine and be tracked the way I'm being monitored right now. Now, before we make it into Japan, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. As you may already know, Surfshark is my absolute favorite VPN service it is astonishingly affordable and I cannot live without it. Most importantly, it keeps me safe by encrypting my personal information so I don't have to worry about anyone trying to access my data, which is especially important when you are traveling and relying on public Wi-Fi. Plus, you won't get targeted ads because Surfshark will protect you from the internet eavesdropping on you and learning about you, something that I am personally very paranoid about. But the best part it allows you to access TV shows and movies from Netflix and other streaming services that aren't normally available in your area. Area. All you have to do is set your location and Netflix will automatically populate what is available from that region. Plus, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can test out Surfshark to see if you like it risk-free. Click the link in my description and use my promo code RainaScully to receive 83% off and three months for free. So as your flight gets closer to Japan, you will be given this sheet of paper that they will refer to as a health card even though it's a sheet of paper. It's just another redundant rehashing of what you're required to do. You just have to check off which region you've been in prior to Japan and whether you are exhibiting any symptoms. You will hand this health card back and forth to about a dozen different people at the airport. I highly recommend you get a folder or like a manila file so you can keep all your documents together in a safe place. And now, welcome back to Japan. We were basically escorted from our seat to an agent at the gate where our paperwork was initially inspected. Then we walked about a half a kilometer to a completely secluded terminal. Then you get to another checkpoint, hand all of your documents over again, they verify, give it back to you, rinse and repeat about four more times until you are in another completely blocked off terminal, and this is where you queue to get COVID tested. We were handed little plastic tubes and funnels to collect our saliva, and you are brought to a tiny booth where they have pictures of sour things like lemons, I guess, to help you produce saliva. After you've gotten enough saliva, you cap it, surrender the vial, you get a sticker on your paperwork, and then you are brought to another huge gate area, and this is where you have to download the three apps that are going to be tracking you your whole quarantine. This took forever because everyone is on the same airport Wi-Fi, so pro tip, 
Download all three of these apps beforehand, but do not open them until you get to this checkpoint. There's a lot of sensitive information that you have to register into the apps and they have people there to help you every step of the way. So just download it, have it ready on your phone, but don't open it. After you get all three apps up and running on your phone with the correct registration, you are then free to go on to the next checkpoint where they verify your information again for the very last time. And then if everything is good, you can now go to a separate area upstairs where you can retrieve your COVID test results. So at this point, you still don't know if you're positive or negative. If you test negative for COVID, you will be given this pink slip and you are pretty much free to go. So now let's talk about the apps and how Japan is going to be monitoring you during your quarantine. First is the OEL or Overseas Entrance Locator. Once you arrive at your quarantine destination, whether it be your home or a hotel, you hit check in and that address has to match up with the information you provided earlier in your paperwork. And then every day for the next 14 days, the app is going to send you a notification asking you to check in. It has happened so far twice a day, every single day, usually once in the AM and once in the PM. This is super simple and non-invasive. The next app is the My SOS app, which is basically used as a one-way communication device. Someone is going to call you every day to verify who you are and that you are still in the same location. You must turn your camera on and they can see you, but you can't see them, so it's a little bit creepy, but there is a real person on the other side. It's always a quick 30 second phone call where they just ask if you are still in the location that you provided. And sometimes they ask you to verify your name and date of birth. Sometimes an AI will call you instead, in which case you still have to turn your camera on and it will instruct you to say your home address and your name and that's it. So the last app is the contact tracing app, which I haven't had to open or use or look at once. I think this is only important if let's say you randomly get sick during your quarantine or you happen to come across somebody that turned out to be sick or something like that. That's essentially it. At the end of the day, it's not that invasive, but you do have to have your phone on you constantly because you don't know when they're going to call. And if you miss the call, even by like a couple seconds, it logs it. I've only ever missed one call and it was on the first day. The app is super buggy. It rang while it was on the lock screen. Screen. So I had to answer it first and then I had to unlock it. When I unlocked it, it just shut the app down. Needless to say, I freaked out and then I learned later that it did log it as a missed call, which is ridiculous because I obviously answered it, otherwise it wouldn't have opened the app that way and crashed it. Anyway, so I quickly emailed them, explained to them what happened with screenshots that were worthless and they got back to me and said, thanks for your cooperation. Yeah, the app is buggy. Keep up the good work. Quarantining in general is not that hard, especially when you live with your significant other and you're capable of working from home. I will say that not being able to get groceries is very rough. Again, we would not have been able to do this if my family weren't just willing to drop off groceries every few days. But that was basically it. This was exactly what I experienced about two weeks ago when I came back. I really hope this video was interesting or maybe even useful to anybody wanting to know what Japan's situation is like right now. I do want to share a few final thoughts on this whole ordeal of returning to Japan. When I first flew out to New Jersey in early May, it still felt very pandemic-y. The streets were rather empty, everybody was fully masked up, there were a lot of indoor dining stipulations still in place, and we got to experience being in the East Coast while everything visibly improved. Then coming back to Japan, where people are still waiting for their age group to open up to allow for vaccine appointments, and seeing that not much has changed or improved in the last two months was really eye-opening. I haven't been able to make a personal comparison until now, but it really did feel like I came back to a country that is more than five steps behind. It is improving here though. My 89-year-old Obachan was able to get her first vaccine dose just last week, so I'm hoping to see 
that progress and improvement here in Japan as well. I hope it's as clear as I was able to see it in New Jersey. Let me know in the comments how your country is doing and please leave me any questions about traveling to Japan. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you again so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Sanjana, t a n e